We've been pouring through hundreds of hours of audio stories from inside the Kennedy White House. Relax. Nobody's going to shoot me. Nobody's going to shoot me. Some of these tapes have never been heard before, but they really give a perspective on history. We will show you these tapes coming up next. Two thousand eleven marks the fiftieth anniversary of the Kennedy White House. Tonight we have an extraordinary look back at some private moments recorded on audio tape back in the sixties, then hidden away. KTLA's Dave Malkoff here in studio with those Kennedy tapes. Dave. Well, Micah, imagine growing up in a middle class family, then suddenly you go to college and you're friends with what will become the most powerful family in the world. Well, tonight you are going to listen to a man who recorded his memories on tape. He's gone now, but we found his daughter, his adult daughter, living right here in Southern California. I'm Helen O'Donnell. My father was Kenny O'Donnell, who was John Kennedy's political chief of staff and a uh, good friend. Okay, start again. This is, let me slug this. This is uh, O'Donnell tape one. The audio recordings, my dad did them with Sandra Van Oker, who was the great journalist. Go ahead. I was born in Worcester, Massachusetts, 1924. Now, keep in mind, these were all recorded after that day in Dallas, uh, mid-60s. Mid like 1965. Helen has just about 200 hours of audio interviews with her father. They were supposed to be part of a book, and the tapes kind of went away. I mean, they sort of went into a box, and nobody really knew they were there. You see, Kenny O'Donnell wasn't just someone who knew JFK. Helen's dad was as close as brothers to U.S. Attorney General Bobby Kennedy. Bobby and my dad were best, best friends. And the relationship between all three was raw and unfiltered. So I was ready to knock that son of a bitch across the room. We knew it was coming. But I'll tell you one thing, Kenny, those brass heads have one big advantage. They decided to do the movie 13 Days. That was back in 2000. There's Kevin Costner. My name's Ken O'Donnell. Right where Dad was, in the middle of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, this is a life or death situation. So many people just jump right into the Cuban Missile Crisis, and I think the perspective is wonderful because in 1961, Jack and Jackie made the famous trip to France. And later to Vienna. Part of the trip was for Kennedy to meet Khrushchev because he thought Kennedy was weak. To go all really, he felt Khrushchev would try to do something crazy. The president was, uh, when he came back, was not upset nor surprised. That's why, just over a year later, when those crazy 13 days would come, President Kennedy already had his eye on Cuba. And I was standing reading the newspaper, and the door opened behind me, and the president looked at me and said, uh, you're still convinced Cuba has nothing to do with the campaign. I said, I'm totally convinced, and I'm more convinced now than I ever was. He said, uh, would you still feel the same way if they had uh, missiles in Cuba? Missiles? What kind of missiles? I said, uh, uh, you wouldn't be kidding me, would you? Khrushchev was, um, lost his position from, from the decision afterwards because he, he had to back down, of course. Those who have talked the most since it was over talked the least while it was going on. This is Walter Grand Guide in our newsroom in... There has been an attempt, as perhaps you know now, on the life of President Kennedy. Within a year, John F. Kennedy would be dead. Word just came to us a minute ago. And they were in the backup car right behind him, so they saw when the president was shot. Uh, I think he always felt responsible. So he called the first order he gave me to give to the Secret Service. He said, I'm going to tell him to put sports shirts on and relax. Nobody's going to shoot me. Nobody's going to shoot me. The tapes will replay that story tomorrow. You see, when a close family friend is assassinated and then tragically it happens again, well, you start to beat yourself up over it. Helen's father died when she was very young, and she always felt that he really died, Micah, of a broken heart. Live here in studio, I'm Dave Malkoff, KTLA 5 News. Dave, thank you. Tomorrow at 10, we'll hear why Kenny O'Donnell and others on the plane with JFK's body were afraid they were about to be arrested. More inside stories like that in part two tomorrow, right back here at 10 o'clock. It is fascinating. Wow. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the Kennedy White House. And tonight we have part two of an extraordinary look back at some private moments recorded on audio tape back in the 1960s. KTLA's Dave Malkoff here with those Kennedy tapes. Dave? Share, Micah, these Kennedy tapes started out as audio reels that have been boxed up for decades. We actually transferred them to a digital format for you to hear for the very first time tonight. 
Now we only have them because of the woman we introduced you yesterday. We're going to reintroduce you right now. I'm Helen O'Donnell. Her father, Ken. Kenny O'Donnell. Bobby Kennedy's best friend. This is uh, O'Donnell tape one. Left something special behind. Can you put one of them in? They think that as president of the United States that I'm going to push that button and incinerate the world. I think they've got another thing coming. Before he died, he recorded so audio tapes, tapes call personal call stories call. lost to history until now. The time between when Jack Kennedy was elected and uh, became inaugurated. In the winter of 1960, the president-elect and his team went down to the Kennedy compound in Palm Beach, Florida. My dad was there and they were forming the government. Dave and I and the president came out to have a swim and a bottle of beer, I think around noontime, and plane was flying over, obviously taking pictures. Jack is trying to relax. But everything had changed. They were now under the protection of the U.S. Secret Service. The president says, you know, could he have a little privacy? Something those guys had to get used to. Was there any way they could keep them at a, at a reasonable distance? There were boats. They've got guns. We were sitting around that day. It was very warm, as I recall, and the uh, Secret Service now posted. You know, climbing in the palm trees. And they were all dressed in their Brooks Brothers suits. So he called the first order he gave me to give to the Secret Service service. He said, I'm sure that at 100 degrees temperature, they don't have to sit around in suits. Will you tell them to put sports shirts on and relax? Nobody's going to shoot me. Nobody's going to shoot me. Uh, I think he always felt responsible. I, I, I suspect he spent a lot of time thinking about things he, he wished had been done differently. That day in Florida, the Secret Service detail never truly backed off. They just changed out of those stuffy suits. This is tape 63 O'Donnell. But Kenny O'Donnell was there in the motorcade when the assassin struck down an American president. They didn't know if they were dealing with a conspiracy or what they were dealing with. And they, my dad made the decision to take the president's body back to Washington to be autopsied. We arrived on the airplane and we're all punchy now and I'm concerned that the Dallas police are going to come and take the body off the plane and Jackie Kennedy's going to have a heart attack right in front of us there, so I, I'm petrified. In a second set of tapes from the late 60s, Kenny O'Donnell talks about how it was actually against Texas law to take a murder victim's body out of the state. I'm still trying to get them to get the plane off, swear them in and let's go before those cops show up now and get us all in trouble. Even if the president's here, they can just put a motorcycle cord in front of an autopsy under the law is required. I am very proud to be his daughter and have put together this collection of material. Perhaps the world can get to know him better in his story and through him get to know Jack Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy and uh, the men that they were. And starting tomorrow, we'll have more of those tapes posted at ktla.com slash Dave, facebook.com slash Dave News, and on iTunes. Now, Helen is turning all of this into a book and a film entitled The Immortals, Jack, Frank, Marilyn, and Dad. It turns out that there's quite a few pieces of American history locked away on those tapes. Live in studio tonight, I'm Dave Malkoff, KTLA 5 News. Fascinating stuff, Dave. Thank you for